Hello, this is Chip McGee, Superintendent of Schools here in Pelham. Welcome to the January edition of Pelham School District Today. Um, uh, today we are hosting, I'm glad to have here, Deb Mahoney. She's our business administrator here in the district. Um, and our topic is budget. It makes a lot of sense to be talking about here in January because uh, it's where we turn over the work that we've done internally um, and it becomes something that the community is going to be talking about in February and making an important decision on in March. So we wanted to make sure you're informed. Um, so uh, welcome, Deb. Very nice to have you. Thank you very much, Chip. Yep. And uh, so I just thought it would be helpful for community members who are tuned in um, to understand the process. Um, and so could you just walk us through um, what's the budget development process so that we can figure out what we're asking for for next year? Well, it is a lengthy process. Yep. It starts early. We start in May, uh -huh. and we put a schedule together, a schedule that aligns with the budget committee's uh -huh. plan for uh -huh. their meetings, uh -huh. and what our deadline is to, to deliver the school board's budget to the budget committee for their consideration. Okay. And so the schedule starts in um, August is when the first input is complete. Yep and present it to the board during the month of September, every week. So in August, who's, who's putting that, gathering that input to give to the board? So all departments will have input to their requested budgets. Mm -hmm. So departments include each of the three schools, yep. and then we have a district level, which includes special education, okay. technology, yep. facilities, and our, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, the SAU, yeah, yeah. Uh, which includes curriculum. Yeah. And does, where does food service fit in there? Is that part of it too? Or food that... service is its own budget. Okay. And they are also expected to complete their separate input budget. Uh, so they're doing a... that all in August, uh, even before kids are back. That's true. And yeah. that's preparation for the next year's budget. So they get it all in, then what happens? So all of that input is complete, and then it's presented to the school board during the month of September. Mm -hmm. And they meet on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. and each department head will come and present their requested budget. Mm -hmm. um, all right, and so uh, uh, in my previous experience, uh, I had gotten up to that point, um, but something that was new to me here was uh, after the board completed, as it were, it completed its work, it went to the budget committee. Could you kind of just walk me through the board completing its work and then and then the role of the budget committee? Sure. The school board finishes their budget and delivers a budget book, a completed recommended budget, uh -huh. to the budget committee for them to review. Uh -huh. They go through a detailed review as well mm -hmm. and um, each of the different departments are presented in, in the three different schools as well as the district and then we also have the nutrition services fund that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We have a grants fund, mm -hmm. which is also a self-funded program. Mm -hmm. And then we have an other special revenue fund. So the general fund and all of those other funds are all presented to the budget committee during the month of October into November. Okay, and so uh, uh, is it fair to say that's just kind of do it all again, but now for the budget committee? I think that's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, throughout the process, we have different levels of, of cuts that are implemented uh -huh. and are documented within the, the actual budget book. So when a community member looks at our budget, they'll see different levels of review and cuts. Mm -hmm. So a level two is the superintendent. So after yeah. those first requests come in, then you're reviewing and you're adjusting the budget. Yep, you and I walked through the budget before it got to the board. Yes. And uh, I had some places that I wanted to uh, reduce. All mm -hmm. right. And then what's the next level after that? Then there's the level three is the school board's budget. Okay. So the school board does their adjustments. Mm -hmm. And in their adjustments, oftentimes we have our guaranteed maximum reduction for our medical insurance at that point. Mm -hmm. And so some of those, some of those cuts are throughout the entire budget. So if you're looking at the budget book, you'll see level three school board reduction, mm -hmm. guaranteed max rate, GMR. Mm -hmm. And that's what that means. Okay. And so um, uh, I was really struck in the uh, budget committee work that I did, um, how uh, uh, thoughtful and thorough a process they wanted us to go through. 
Um, and uh, in the end, I, I feel like they had a really good handle on the budget. Um, uh, what, uh, just explain to the community, so what's happening at the budget committee level? What are they doing and um, uh, what are they trying to, when do they know when their work is done? Well, they go. They ask us to go through a detailed review uh -huh. of the entire budget that's being presented. Uh -huh. And we do that and explain to them what areas are increasing and what areas are decreasing and why. Uh -huh. As an example, an increase might be a guaranteed maximum increase rate for our medical insurance. Uh -huh. So that is explained as we go through each line. Uh -huh. And once the budget committee has listened to the presentation, mm -hmm. they review and come back with questions. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll provide uh, specific questions. Uh, can you explain what this item is? Mm -hmm. um, and we go through the detailed uh, reaching out to the department heads, getting all of their answers consolidated and provided to them in a concise way mm -hmm. so that they can um, review those questions and understand mm -hmm. what we're presenting. So and once then- they get all those answered, then they take an action. What's what's the? How do they wrap up? Um, they take a vote. All right. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, that vote uh, this year, it was very uh, nice to have their uh, unanimous support mm -hmm. um, uh, once we uh, presented. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, uh, that kind of brings us up to almost today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, could you? Uh, before we get into the details and nuances of this year's actual budget, where do we go from here? What are the what are the next steps now that it's January? Just walk a, a community member through what happens. Um, <coughs> excuse me to the budget going forward. Sure. So the the budget committee makes their recommended vote, mm -hmm. and that information is consolidated all into a, a report that's called the MS twenty seven. Mm -hmm. That is the proposed budget. We have the proposed budget, and we have the Warren articles. That's Those the one that's the, the MS-27 is pretty standardized around the state. It is. So you can see you know, what, what Wyndham and Pelham, Hudson, Salem, every, every district mm -hmm. uh, fills one of those out. Are, Correct. Okay. And, then, and then we are required to, pro to post those items mm -hmm. up so that the public can see them. Mm -hmm. We also put them on our website so that folks can see them there, but we post them at our high school, which is where the voting occurs mm -hmm. in March. Mm -hmm. And we also post them in the town hall. Mm -hmm. So there's a bulletin board area that we go over. And that posting is done by next Monday, actually, mm -hmm. is the deadline for that, which mm -hmm. would be the 25th of January. Yeah. And uh, once we post them, then that's the community information. We come together on deliberative session, which is February 3rd this year. Yeah. And we answer questions from the public and that meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, th that meeting is also, it's deliberative as a Senate Bill 2 town. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I have it right, uh, uh, there tends to not be action taken, but there could be action taken at that level as well mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. relative to the, uh, the budget as it's presented. All right, so we move through that. The deliberative session happens. Mm -hmm. Let's assume there weren't any changes. Then what? And then uh, we prepare for voting day. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I... I know I'm asking some of these. I know the answer to, but I think it's good to just talk about. So, uh, for the operating budget, do we need? Uh, is it 50% plus one, or is it 60%? What do you need to have a passed operating budget? Um, I have it right on the Warren article mm -hmm. to make sure that it's clear to people that it's majority. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for the operating budget, 50% plus one person, and, mm -hmm. and the operating budget will go through. And so. Um, a couple interesting twists. Uh, because we're Senate Bill 2, um, uh, there has to be a, a, an answer to what happens if the budget gets voted down. In a traditional town meeting, you would just continue to uh, sort it out until you had a budget. But mm -hmm. this is a vote with a yes or no um, on the ballot. So um, what happens if it's a no vote, just so that the community is aware? So we have the calculated default budget that okay. is part of Warren Article 3, which is our operating budget. Mm -hmm. And should that article not pass and we don't get the approved 
operating budget, mm -hmm. the default budget number will be our budget for the following year. That number will be the number that we can that we can um, work with. And um, uh, I've had a lot of conversations about default budget, and, and sometimes people will say, oh, well, I assume that that's last year's budget is the default, um, but that's not the case. Um, and I know it's a, it's a pretty long formula that, that you follow and is pretty standardized across the state, but could you just give us a thumbnail of uh, what is the default budget? The default budget is a number that's calculated based on the last approved budget mm -hmm. with pluses and minuses to the number mm -hmm. based on what's legally allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, what so might be a plus that, uh, uh, that would cause the budget from uh, the default from, uh, for this year to be higher? So all of the collective bargaining agreements that have been approved by the community, mm -hmm. the costs that are associated with those, th with those um, yeah. agreement, with that agreement, uh -huh. that's included in the number. Okay, so uh, because there's already an agreement in place for the contract, and it was separately a approved by the by the governing body, are already been approved. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, what's something that might be a, a minus? Um, a minus is any position that, through our process this year, mm -hmm. we've eliminated for next year yep. in so, our operating budget. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, plans that we have to not have a position next year. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. So uh, uh, hopefully we get a, a, a yes uh, on March 9th. Yes. Um, and then we uh, start putting in place that that will be for... Uh, July 1st of 2021. Mm -hmm. And by then we'll already have been started on our next year's projected because it, all starts it continues. Again. It yes. all starts again, that's right. And so um, that's, a, that's a helpful just explanation of the summary. It takes the better part of a year to put all that together. It really does and we're in three budgets at the same time. So we're, <laughs> we're in the 20 year. Yep. We're managing our 21 year and we're budgeting for our 22 year. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's hard to remember what year it is that we're talking about. <laughs> um, and so, uh, what should voters or community members be aware of? What are some of the big drivers of our budget uh, as we put it together for this coming year? The primarily the increases that we're seeing are related to our salaries and our benefits. Okay. And those are associated with our collective bargaining agreements mm -hmm. that have that are in place now. We're in a multi-year agreements on both of those um, bargaining groups that we have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're also seeing an increase in our New Hampshire retirement rates. So the employer portion of the rate mm -hmm. um, is statutorily set, uh -huh. and that rate has been increased for both our employee group and our teacher group for this upcoming year. So um, I'll ask a question I get asked a lot. Can't we just not pay that increase? I mean, why do we have to pay that? As I said, it's statutorily set, uh -huh. um, and our membership requires that we pay the, po the, the rate that is identified. And it's a two-year rate, so every two years they calculate that, and mm -hmm. so this increase will be in the fiscal year 22, and it will remain the same for fiscal year 23. Okay, so uh, so the rate increase uh, into 22 um, was pretty substantial this yeah, year. Yeah, I actually wrote down, just so that I'd have it here, um, the employee increase uh, for employee group is a 25.8% increase. Oh, my God. And the teachers group is an 18.1% increase. And that's a big group, too. Yeah, and the New Hampshire Retirement puts out quite a lot of uh, communication information on their website mm -hmm. about how it's calculated and some of the history behind it. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty interesting reading if you're interested in that type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But they do use an actuary to calculate out all kinds of things in order to determine those rates. Yeah, and that's to make sure that there's enough money there to fund the, new, the full New Hampshire Retirement System. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and... Uh, so we can't get out of that one. No. Um, and uh, th that's one of the big drivers. You talked about uh, salary and benefits. Are there other areas besides New Hampshire retirement benefit that uh, have been increases this year? Or, or looking towards next year? Yeah, I mentioned the 
Health Trust Guaranteed Maximum Rate, mm -hmm. GMR we call it, uh -huh. and those uh, those rates for medical are 9% increase for next year. A 9% increase on our insurance premiums. That's correct. Yeah, health insurance premiums. Yeah, and so, and that's part of our negotiation with our teachers group and our PESPA group that we offer certain plans, mm -hmm. and, um, and so those increases are also required to be included. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, it, from from my experience, there's been uh, times when as much as nine percent feels overwhelming uh, for health insurance increases. Uh, it's um, it has been worse, um, and uh, th that is a pretty challenging uh, area. How come um, how come we don't just uh, switch carriers or shop that around? Well, as I mentioned, we do have an agreement with our teachers and our and our PESPA group, mm -hmm. um, which is the majority of our employees that are on these plans. Yeah. And so, it isn't something that we can flip a switch, um, you know, and make a change. When does the uh, what's the time frame on the teachers' contract? What year are we in? We're in year three of five. Three of five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, so those are those are two two big drivers, um, uh, and what I'm wondering is, we haven't yet talked at all um, about uh, the uh, middle school, uh, or the, the Pelham Memorial School project, mm -hmm. um, and that's, we'll talk about that more in a special edition, but how, how does that, just how does that fit with this budget? Um, uh, it's not in the operating budget, right? It's, uh, just explain how that fits so that people understand where do they make that decision. So, the, so we have two, two articles okay. that are both financial that are going to be on the warrant for this year. Mm -hmm. Article 2 is the upgrade and renovation to the Memorial School project. Okay. And Article 3 is the operating budget that we've been speaking about up until now. So voters, when they, uh, when they go in, will have... Um, Article 2, they'll be able to make a decision about uh, their support uh, or uh, not support for Pell Memorial School. I hope they support it. I think it's it's uh, high time and a, and a well-designed project. And then they'll have a second vote they can make, which is just about the operating budget. Mm -hmm, that's um, correct. That's two and three. What's number one? Number one, we have two board positions that are available uh, for for election this year. And those, that's a three-year term. Okay, so it's, uh, and that's the only three decisions that, uh, for on the school district side. That's correct. One is uh, election of board members, two is about Pelham Memorial Schools project, and three is our operating budget. Um, good. Well, uh, so those were, those were the things I wanted to ask you about. And, Great. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, and as a, as a still a fairly new uh, guy in the district and new in my role as superintendent, um, I just want to say thank you to you because it's very nice to have someone who has such a good handle on the budget um, as I came in. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that is uh, our January episode of Pelham School District today. Thank you and take care.